What's going on everybody? It's Sasha, your licensed real estate market expert here in Charlotte. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back for another video, which we're gonna be talking about living in Charlotte NC suburbs, the top five reasons that you should. So if this is something you've been considering or you maybe already live in the suburbs, I'd absolutely love to get your guys' feedback on some of the items I mentioned and let me know where you might be able to chime in on me if you're already living in the suburbs or if you're somebody that's thinking about moving to the suburbs. So right now I'm actually in downtown Matthews, which is one of the suburbs about Charlotte. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel, hit the like button. And as always, if there's anything I can ever do for you in regards to real estate, answering any questions you have about Charlotte, some of its surrounding areas, zip codes, anything like that at all, you can always call, text, or email me. All my contact information is right here and also link down below. So with all that being said, let's get into the first pro of living in the suburbs. So pro number one is going to be space. Now, when I say space, what I mean is bigger backyards, usually suburban homes tend to have, you know, the bigger backyards, bigger square footage as far as the homes goes. And then obviously you're gonna have a little bit more privacy than you would inside the city. I know what you might be thinking, a lot of the new construction homes that are being built in the suburbs in and around Charlotte, the lot sizes aren't that big. Typically, on average, for like the newer construction homes, you're going to be looking at about 0.20 to a fifth of an acre. And if you're lucky, you're going to be closer to a quarter, if not a third. If you happen to get a home that's potentially a corner lot, you're going to be looking at roughly about a third of an acre, which is great. So the reason I say space is a lot of families tend to live in the suburbs and not to mention some of the cost advantages that you can get as far as buying a home in the suburbs versus buying a home that's closer to the city. Now let's go ahead and move on to pro number two, which is going to be community amenities. A ton of suburbs in and around Charlotte have amazing amenities. You have pools, playgrounds, you have walk-in trails, tennis courts. There's just so many things to name from as far as amenities goes, which sometimes inside of the city, there's just not enough space to provide you those type of amenities that you can get in the suburbs. And while we're talking about the amenities, as far as pricing goes, I will tell you guys, roughly 80% of the neighborhoods in and around Charlotte are going to have an HOA, especially the suburbs. So more often than not, if your HOA is roughly under 400 or under $500 a year, you're not really going to get, you know, the, like we talked about, you're not really going to get the pools, the tennis courts, the playgrounds and the walk-in trails and things like that. Usually that stuff, that HOA under four, under 500 is just going to be to manage the grounds and be able to enforce code and just make sure that the residents are keeping up with their properties in order to keep the home values high. Now, once you start getting above that $500 range per year, as far as an HOA goes, that's when you're gonna start seeing those pools, the tennis courts, the walk-in trails, and a lot of neighborhoods do a lot of activities as well for the neighbors to kind of get to know each other and things like that. A kind of a sweet spot is gonna be seven to $800 a year. That's kind of the price range where you're gonna start seeing those communities that are gonna be able to offer you those amenities. So if having amenities, if you don't wanna end up building a pool or if you want a great place where you want your kids and everything like that to socialize and you as well being able to socialize, a lot of these communities, they'll have you know food trucks, they'll do movie nights and things like that to get all of the neighbors acquainted because again, you're in the suburbs, you're not directly in the city. So you're gonna have a little bit less people, but it's gonna be easier to get to know people just because the kids are gonna be running around and everything like that. So it's very easy to meet other people and meet parents. Now going on that same note, as far as meeting people, the third pro of living in the suburbs is just gonna be family friendly. As I mentioned a little bit earlier in the video, most people that move to the suburbs are gonna be a young family that is looking for you know, the good schools, they're looking for a bigger home for the price. And just to kind of give you a little bit of clarification, when I think of suburbs, you know, Waxhaw pops in my head, Weddington, Wesley Chapel, Marvin, Mooresville, Huntersville, Cornelius, so many different areas pop into my head. And those are kind of the areas that people tend to go towards. And I want to touch a little bit on price point. For example, any of those following areas that I mentioned as far as the homes goes, if you were to find a home in that area for six, seven, 
800,000. If you were to move that same home, that 3,000, 3,500 square foot home closer to the city, instead of it being six, seven, 800,000, you're easily gonna be over a million dollars. So that is one of the great features that a suburb can provide you, as I mentioned before. Usually you're gonna have bigger yard space, you're gonna have bigger square footage, and you're gonna have that privacy. Each neighborhood is gonna be a little bit different, as I mentioned before, but that's definitely a factor to consider is gonna be the cost effectiveness of living in a suburb versus kind of living inside of a city more so to say. Now moving on to the fourth pro that a suburb provides is going to be schools families want to be in good schools and on average most of the better schools most of the higher rated schools are going to be located in and around the charlotte area and around the suburbs now that is not to say that there isn't good schools inside the city super close to uptown and things like that because there definitely are but a majority of them are going to be located outside in the suburbs which is what a lot of families are looking for and honestly Anytime I'm helping a family move into the suburbs, schools is going to be in the top three, if not the number one deciding factor for a family to move into a particular area and or to a particular suburb. Now, Charlotte is doing a really great job at providing better schools for a little bit closer to the inner city. So there's a ton of private charter Catholic and academies and things like that that you can enroll your kids into. And it doesn't matter what zip code you live in. Um, what school district or anything like that. You can enroll into those schools no matter where you live. And as Charlotte is changing a ton more, we're adding on, they're building a ton of more schools. And as I mentioned, they're giving people that option. If they want to live in an area where the schools aren't that great, they're giving people that option to go into an academy, a charter, a private and or Catholic school, which is really great because you can essentially put yourself anywhere in those areas and find a good school. Now, the fifth pro to moving to the suburbs is going to be a small town feel. As I mentioned, I'm in Matthews right now and I live pretty close to here. And this has a small downtown area. Any of these suburban areas, Waxhaw, Huntersville, Concord, Harrisburg, Cornelius, they all have their little kind of downtown areas where most of the people are gonna be gathering, where you have most of your coffee shops, breweries, boutique stores, and in case of events, Memorial Day, uh, 4th of July, things like that. They put on a ton of events in these downtown areas so all the locals that live close to that downtown area can go there and explore. So guys, I'm 30 years old and it's funny enough, I love kind of that suburban feel and I love like this little downtown Matthews area. If you happen to be in and around Charlotte, if you visit downtown Matthews on a weekend or something like that, you are most likely gonna catch me drinking a beer at one of the breweries we have up here. And it's just very nice. It's very vibrant. There's a lot of activity going on, especially during events. And it's very family friendly oriented. You have people all different ages and everything just kind of you know, coagulating together, having a great time with their family and friends. And I love that, you know, but uh, I'm always personally torn about this type of stuff because anytime I visit a certain neighborhood, whether it be, you know, in directly in uptown, south end, if I'm looking at townhouses, condos, or, you know, a single family home in those kind of areas that are closer to the city, and then I look in the suburb, I can honestly see myself anywhere. But I will personally say, once I start to have kids and things like that, I definitely am going to be leaning more towards that kind of suburban lifestyle. Right now, it, it, like I said, it's a mix between two. I feel like I'm a little bit of an old soul, so I like hanging out where it's a little bit more quiet, but then sometimes I like to go where the activity is a little bit more and hustling and bustling. So guys, again, any other questions you potentially have, you can call, text, or email me anytime. I'd love to chat with you about any questions you have, anything you know, real estate related, relocation related in regards to any zip codes, or anything like that. Make sure you guys hit that subscribe button and call, text, or email me anytime, and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye.